Hello gamers and welcome back, I'm Rob of course, or Warshack if you want to call me by my in-game name, and today we're going to be doing our deck guide on our ultimate value rogue deck, a very fun, very interactive, interesting deck um, that will take your mind off always going face if you're playing a lot of Pirate Warrior, or if you're just playing the normal Jade Shaman, it's kind of very linear and kind of gets a little boring over time, so to spice things up, ultimate value rogue, here we go. For those of you who are unfamiliar with how we do our deck guides, um, we basically go over the deck, I explain why I have what I have in the particular deck, um, kind of the rundown of cards, from there we'll head into some um, ranked games where we'll play the the deck I'll explain um, kind of my thought process behind each turn how to play the deck what the mulligan should look like and then from there we normally we win about meh, three of the four games we play most of the time we always have at least one loss in there um, just to kind of show the deck can lose I just don't want to show oh here's a hundred percent win rate go at it and then you'll lose three games in a row and you're like Warshack this deck sucks <laughs> so I always like to you know show one or two losses in there to show you know you can get bad hands with some of these decks that I build but most of the time you'll just trash everybody I'm just kidding no seriously though okay so first card backstab two of these of course it's a two it's a zero mana I almost said two Deal two damage to an undamaged minion. Um, of course, this is a huge tempo swing. And um, as we know, rogues have a lot of combo activators, such as the SI agent and things like that. Um, so two backstabs, most of the time, very, very common and part of the core build of rogue. Journey from below is a little bit interesting, right? Because most of the time, um, you think of Miracle Rogue or you think of the new Tempo Rogue, which is basically our random rogue just labeled differently and built a little bit differently but people call it theirs but whatever the case may be journey from below fits the fact that we play Nazoth in the deck and it also again is a combo activator for cards like si agent and also um the ability to kind of curve out as you will is very very strong so for example let's say because there's only two tomb pillagers in this deck you don't always have a really strong turn four play, which is a very important mana kind of, that's a very important part of the game. If you don't have a good turn three and turn four play, mostly focusing on turn four, you're going to be behind on board for the remainder of the game if you don't have the adequate removal in your hand. So with the journey from below, it gives you, you know, I'm missing a, a, a four mana card and I have a three and a two. Okay, so we'll go ahead and we'll get the four mana or we're missing our six drop. We have a five. And whatever so it allows you to fit the mana slot based on kind of what your hand is missing which I think is really good of course patches it in here uh, because we run four basically pirates in the deck and it's kind of at this point in time we have to run pat patches based on what m most of our opponents are playing if we're gonna be going against you know aggro war or pirate warrior aggro shaman and an, uh, other aggressive based rogue decks more than 60 65 percent of the time we have to be able to sustain in the early game um so that's why patches is in here of course small time buccaneer still meets that same you know very powerful turn one play overall solid card the swash burglar however isn't in here because he's nor a pirate or a one one he's in here because he battle cry at a random class uh at a random class card to your hand from your opponent's class so if you're playing against druids, shamans, warriors, most of them have some pretty good cards in their classes, and this deck likes to take things, hence the ultimate value rogue. You'll find that you'll, I've outvalued jade druids with this deck, I've outvalued control warriors, I've outvalued reno mage, lock, this deck, it is, it is the king of generating cards that aren't yours and then generating more cards because of those cards so it is this deck is so much fun guys um the blood mage is in here uh for the ability to of course combo with spell power such as fan of nice Evis, shadow strike and things of that nature also cards that aren't in your deck like lava burst lightning bolt or swipe if you're playing i uh, steal it steal it against the druid so there's just a ton of great cards that blood mage can combo with also the ability to draw a card is very important in this deck because this deck um as it does have a lot of stealing, we actually still need to draw cards. Um, so that's where kind of the Azur, Drake, and Blood Mage fit in there, along with the Fan of Knives, but mostly that's in there for clear. Abyss, staple in a rogue deck, not really going to go over that. The Under City Huckster is, again, stealing cards from your opponent's class, and it's still a 2-2 two, two for 2, and it's a Death Rattle. So again, every Death Rattle in the deck is coming back when we get to play Nazoth the Corruptor if they've died on your side of the field. So by the time you play Nazoth, with most of this deck having Death Rattle, you're going to have a sizable board, and most of these cards are going to be able to bring back even more cards or draw you more cards. <laughs> it's just insane value. Double Burgle. This goes with, like, the ultimate value rogue. You basically play one card and you get two. That sounds like a deal to me. Fana Knives, this is your... Um, 
I would have to say early game board removal. Um, there's a lot of 1 HP and 2 HP cards floating around those. So Azur Drake, Fana Knives, Blood Mage, Fana Knives. I'm sure it will clear off some Shaman boards and it'll come in super clutch. Uh, Shadow Strike, this is your basically your 4 drop 7 7 removal um, and or Totem Golem. Uh, whatever uh, Azur Drake, you, they play something you don't like it, you get rid of it. That's what Shadow Strike does. Shaku the Collector. Um, so much value comes out of this card if he stays on the board. Most of the time, your opponent will kill him as soon as possible. Because, again, if he sits on the board, he he basically generates you a card every single turn as long as he attacks. He doesn't have to kill anything. He doesn't have to hit face. He doesn't have to hit a creature. He hits whatever the fuck he wants. This guy starts swinging. He starts generating. So this card's fantastic. SI Agent. Um, again, this card... You can fit other things in this deck, like a Raptor if you want, instead of the SI Agent. But I just like the SI Agent because the ability to deal 2 damage to something in the early game with Backstab, or you combo it with Journey from Below or whatnot, is really, really important uh, because this deck has no healing. So we kind of want to be able to, as long as we survive the early game, this deck can sustain. Tomb Pillager, fantastic 4-drop. Death Rattle, Nazos bringing them back, and the coin allows you to basically... <clears throat> Um, play things that you normally wouldn't be able to play in one turn. Not that we have Auctioneer, but it's very hard for your opponent to know what kind of rogue deck you're playing. So if you have some of the core cards of Miracle, he could be think you're playing Miracle, and then he thinks you're playing Malagos, and then he doesn't know what the fuck you're playing, and then you dominate. So, Azur Drake, how you doing? Found in basically every deck. This card is just a staple, and it's being rotated out, and that's why. Sylvanas. Great Death Rattle. Again, another card being rotated out. We kind of know why. Thistle Tea. It's always tea time here at the Shack. We draw, like, we dr we get one card, we draw a card, and we add two more to it to a hand. So it's basically a one for three. That's value. Ultimate value. It's tea time. That's why it's in the deck. Nizoth brings back a whole field full of Death Rattles. Those Death Rattles have fantastic effects, like giving you cards and swarming the board. Nizoth is kind of your late game finisher. And you can't, you can't beat Nazoth value, guys. Even if you Nazoth and they twisting the other, you're still getting value. Whether you're getting coins, you're drawing cards, you're generating cards from their deck, and you've also made them twisting the other. So, worst case scenario is still good. Um, so, with that, we've covered all the cards in the deck. Hopefully, I've explained them kind of well, and I will see you in those ranked games. So heading into our first game here, we're going to be playing against another rogue, okay? So this is most likely going to be either the Tempo Rogue or the Aggro Rogue is what people are calling it, which is basically our random rogue deck guide we did not so long ago, or it's going to be Miracle Rogue. Um, I really don't like Burgle or Journey from Below this early on. I'll look for our, you know, our two drops and our three drops. There we go. Another double Swash Burglar opening hand. So not too shabby. Of course, we always start with Small Time Buccaneer whenever we have the Pirate Opener because our turn two can consist of Hero Power and we can kind of upgrade that Small Time Buccaneer. But like, let's say we don't draw the Small Time Buccaneer, then of course, dropping Swash Burglar on one is always acceptable as well. The problem though, with playing Swash Burglar against a Rogue is it's going to generate us a random Rogue card versus us just playing a Rogue card if we were to exchange Swash Burglar with another card, if you get what I'm saying. So, like, let's say if we were playing against a Shaman and we can generate a random Shaman card, that's not a card that we could normally put in our deck, but because we're playing against an actual Rogue, it's a card that we actually could have put into our deck, making our deck weaker, because we didn't actually get to pick the card. So that's kind of an interesting way to look at Swash Burglar. Who goes there? So, of course, like I said, small time buccaneer, hit face with patches. Never forget to hit face with patches. This is very important. Never draw patches either. It's part of the deck. It's part of the deck guide. Never draw patches. So, it looks like he's swashing. It looks like he has patches in his hand. So, ripperonis for this little guy. So, we're going to hero power this. Keep the creatures in play. Creatures can deal more damage over time than a weapon can. Plus, this costs mana. These don't. So, always make sure you know what I'm saying. Know what I'm saying. So, our turn three will consist of either Und Undercity and Swash Burglar. Probably playing Swash Burglar first to see what we get from it. Because it could have been. It could be a really good two drop that we'd play over the Undercity. Most likely not, but it's still always good to check. So, we swash in. Ooh. So we could actually cold blood this, go face, forces him to backstab if he has it, and then we can actually just play the other Swash Burglar. Or we could just use it for trade. Eh, I like it. I like going in. 
It puts like super high priority on needing to kill this guy. Like, look at this. This is insane amount of pressure on the board, and we're not even playing aggro rogue. But our deck told us randomly that we're going to be playing aggro rogue. <laughs> oh. We even got a shadow strike, so that's super sick. So if he doesn't have a backstab, he's so fucked. So he actually may have to coin... What would he coin for? Thank Tomb you. Pillager and then backstab? He doesn't have it. Holy moly mackerel, guys. You're just going to accept the fact that this guy's going to ruffle your jam jams right here? A small time buccaneer with seven attack. All right. So what I see here. Do we just shadow strike go face? That's what it's looking like. This guy's jam jams are extremely ruffled right now. Holy moly mackerel. Turn four with the random rogue. He's down to eight. Okay. Well, incredible. that's pretty incredible. I'm sorry about that, man. That's some randomly bad luck. All right, that was a pretty nice first game, if you ask me. You know what I'm saying? Know what I'm saying? <laughs> Twitch jam, ruffle your jam jams. <laughs> I'm just saying, you know, if you if you're just playing the game and all of a sudden you're your jam jams all just getting all ruffly, you're just like fuck. We may have gotten our mojo back. Last night I went on a little mojo hunt. And I purchased a, I, I purchased a grand amount of, <laughs> grand amount of mojo. So playing against another rogue, so it's kind of like a redemption game for the other guy. Um, keeping Shaku really doesn't feel that bad. It really doesn't. As long as again, the key to this deck is to just not draw patches. If you don't draw patches, your win rate goes up to by I think twenty percent. <laughs> so, who goes there? Who goes there? All right, so the question is, what do we do now? Do we coin Undercity Huckster, which is weak to backstab? Do we coin Hero Power, attack the small-time Buccaneer to guarantee the kill over the course of two turns? Do we wait? Do we save coin? Do we coin at the Phantom Knives? These are the questions that we ask ourselves. I think the best play is to kill this small-time Buccaneer as soon as possible, because this guy is annoying. We also could coin Undercity, which does lead to a kill on there when his most of the... Okay. Okay. We play Undercity, he's going to Hero Power, trade, trade, this isn't going to die. We're still going to take three, and we're going to take nine. We go ahead and coin Hero Power, we attack, we take three, we take three again, which is... Wait, that's ten damage that we would take from him. Because, you know, wait, Hero Power, hit one, hit for three, hit for seven. We take seven from him if we Hero Power. I think it's the play, though. Unfortunately, we didn't draw a backstab or a pirate, so this is the play we got to do. And as we know, the rogue class doesn't have any healing, <laughs> so it's not like we can burgle healing. So it's very. This is not looking like a good, uh, a good little shindig. So unfortunately, a one mana card did seven damage to us over the course of two turns. But ooh, never mind. How you doing, small bucky? Who's in charge now? I'm in charge now. All right, so if we choose to attack this Patches, he can't kill this small-time buck. So that feels good. So we're going to go ahead and choose to do that. Because let's say we don't do anything. He can a hero power and kill it, but now it has 2 HP. You know, it doesn't get the buff, but it's totally acceptable behavior. Next turn, we can drop the Shaku. The following turn, we hero power under city. Or maybe we hero power now, so we take six instead of just taking uh, that. But we'd have to draw one drop. We didn't draw one drop. So, so it's basically lose tempo, deal more damage, or gain tempo, do less damage. I'm I'm all for the tempo. This deck isn't gonna win by doing large quantities of damage quickly unless we get games like we did last game. So, best play he has is Tomb Pillager. No Pillager? Okay, so we can expect an Azur Drake from him. Because he's had a couple dry turns so far. So, first things first, I suppose we go ahead and we Swash. Actually, the first thing we should have done is attack with the Shaku. Gotta generate those random guards. Ooh! That's exciting. <laughs> So next turn we can go Undercity. Dude, this deck is so much fun. How did we not do the deck guide on this sooner, guys? This is just so much randomness. It's great. It's a, it's a, it's an extravaganza of awesomeness. 
Like this can do combo two damage and it does two instead. So we can just combo it with a two drop. Then we can just attack into a four drop. We can attack face with this to generate some random shit. Like this is just insane. Look at this. This does like some damage there. We attack that, we hit face for three. Oh my God, the beat down. Like I said, ease into the mojo. Shaku is a slow and steady mojo generator. Another Drake, that's a little bit too slow, you know what I'm saying, you know what I'm saying. Also, what do we need to draw to make the big shits happen? Hmm. I feel our life total is becoming a, uh, a depleted... Ooh. I guess we just do some more random shit. <laughs> oh, that's not so swell. Hmm. We could go Blood Mage. Fana knives, and then attack into there. I guess first things first, we attack face with this. Holy shit, it's a lot of weapons, man. There's a lot of stuff going on right now. There's a lot of stuff. <laughs> this mm. guy's toast. I don't know if I like that play or not. I don't know if I like that play or not. So it's either Blood Mage, Fana Knives, or it's SI Agent, and then like Blood Mage, I guess, just to put something on the board, but that just doesn't feel good. I guess just putting stuff on the board is acceptable. What the hell is going on, guys? I don't think that this is a very interesting board state. We could even go for tea time, but that's a little bit too slow. Oh, Lotus Agent, though, can discover us a lot of healing. Shaman and Druid have a large quantity of healing, so this could actually be really good for us. The problem is we're at 14, and he hasn't used any of Visses, and he hasn't used any Cold Bloods. Blade Fury? What the flying fuck? <laughs> Hello? Hello? That was a really good uh, good card he got. So how many cards do we have before we start generating some random shit? So we have five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. We have ten cards in our hand. Uh, we know this is going to have to die. And the best way to do that is probably fan. So we don't kill off a creature unless we want a hero power. So many I think we need to go for healing. But at the same time, I just don't. I don't want to go for healing. We should, probably should though, but we're not. Oh man, this is intense. We overdraw no, almost no matter what play we make. <laughs> That's craziness. We're going to overdraw no matter what play we make. Everything in our hand creates value. Every single card does something fan-fucking-tastic. This is horrible. We're, there's too much value in our hand. How is this even possible? There's too much value in our hand right now. That's what I'm talking about. Shuriken his ass. We go face, boys. We're pushing lethal. Thank you for the follow. Cryo Phoenix. Hopefully I said that right. Does this guy have like Leroy Jenkins, Cold Blood, Cold Blood? That'd feel terrible. All right, that feels pretty terrible. But I'll leave this game in here, just because I feel like that's a bullshit loss. That just really doesn't count as a loss. That's like, we know we should have won, but we lost because our opponent didn't actively do anything the entire game and then does a combo like this. So this doesn't really count. It doesn't count. We won in value. That's the point of the deck. <laughs> that's a win in my book. It's not, not the most uh, logical books, but it's a book at that. So that'll be our one loss. We probably shouldn't have traded our face into the Azur, but that was the four damage he had anyway, because he had Leroy, Cold Blood, Cold Blood, and Avis. No, did he just have the Avis and one Cold Blood? I wasn't paying attention. But either way, if he had the Avis too, then it wouldn't have mattered regardless. We got a text from thy uncle. Uh oh. 
Do we keep Tomb Pillager? I don't think so. We have faster starts than that. We hold Tomb Pillager without coin. It's kind of just really rough. Now we got small time buck and it's totally acceptable. <clears throat> well, I didn't really plan for the Leroy cold, double cold blood because of the fact that he didn't even play Auctioneer. Like, he didn't even... He cycled some, but most of his cycle was just solely through drawing cards, which isn't exactly the the highest percentage of drawing exactly what you need for lethal at the exact mana. But it's totally okay. We won. Nah. But this is still a great start, regardless of whether we have Tomb Pillager or not, which is what we need to go for. All this deck needs to do is be able to last the early game without taking too much damage. In the late game, you will just slowly outvalue your opponent. But this is a pretty balls-deep start from this... Uh, this shaman right here that's really good at least we can deal with this small time buccaneer though which is important so who lives in a planet okay so our turn three unfortunately is pretty weak just the si agent nothing to combo with unless we draw a backstab we could journey from below look for a two drop or we look for a four drop probably look for a four drop Oh, this now looks really great. So now we just look for a four drop with journey. Yeah, this is fan fucking tastic. So now we go journey from below. We look for a dank four drop. That's pretty dank, but it's not like, eh, I'll take it. So we got our four drop and then we got our turn five blood mage SI and then we got our tea time on six. Tea times at 6 p.m. Everybody be there or be square. All right. Give me that good poison. Deal two damage. I'm feeling it. We just needed to be able to... Oh, no. <laughs> okay, this is still okay. Well, this can actually do three damage uh, with Blood Mage. Hmm. So we can just deal two and then SI and Hero Power. Or we can play Blood Mage. Eh. Nah, we take too much damage like that. So let's just go with the two and the two. This, guy's this feels good. We clear his board. He only has uh, three cards in hand. He's going to draw four and then five. So it's kind of even again. We're at 23. Not the lowest life, but we haven't really stolen a whole lot yet. We've, do, we've done minimal burgling, minimal stealing. So we still have the chances to steal a bunch of good stuff. That good, good. We also haven't seen that four drop seven, seven, which is pretty scary. But we actually have an active defense against it with the, the Toxin and then another SI. So this will actually be 6, and we can just kill it off with the SI and take no damage. And if he decides he wants to have a dry turn, we can Burgle SI, which doesn't feel that bad. Okay. <clears throat> well, he knows we're going to be trading into a Wolf, which is why he did exactly that. So we could choose to burgle, then SI. We could choose to swash, combo with this, and then hero power to kill the other one, which I like a little bit more. So let's start with the burgle and see what we, we be stealing today. Stormcrack feels pretty good, yeah, man. This, guy's this goes here, that sense. trades here. We hero power that. Feels good. Go. Ward state still in our hand. We've got active removal. We've got buffy buffs. We've got stealing. We've got tea time. We've got we able to combo the blood mage with the stormcrack. Everything looks pretty good. Still at 21 life, only taking 9 damage against what seems to be an aggro-based shaman deck. Could be Jade, but we're not too sure yet. He's running Feral Spirits, which leans more towards aggro. Not the strongest card that could have come from Maelstrom. Feels good. I think this is where Burgle's going to come out and say hello. Spirit Claws, how you doing? That's a pretty good weapon, so I've been told. Hey, so this can trade here. This can kill that. Hmm. I guess we can play the elemental. We can equip the new weapon. A stronger weapon. A more powerful weapon. That's incredible. That's incredible. Yes, it is. Burgle coming in clutch. Who would have known shaman cards are good? Oh, your four drop seven seven. I would be scared, but little do you know I have an active defense against such def dark arts magic. I've taken that class at Hogwarts. And this guy. You stand no chance. We actually could just go storm crack and attack. Oh, there's so much active awesomeness we can do. Holy shitteronies. 
So this does four. This is going to get buffed. I mean, it just feels good, right? It just feels so damn good. Get wrecked. Is it tea time? Is it active tea time? Or do we play under City Huckster? Buff this guy even more and go face. Nah, it's tea time. That's what I'm talking about. Three Tomb Pillagers, no problem. You play two Tomb Pillagers next turn, you follow it up with another Tomb Pillager. How you doing, gentlemen? How you doing? <laughs> Everybody's yelling tea time. Ah, oh, the hero power pulls the spell power. Here comes the Jade Lightning. Rip. Top decks the Jade Lightning? That's going to feel bad. Ah, oh, just the Flame Tongue. Double trade into totems to kill your own guard. Ooh, the Deckhand. What superior placement? This guy is, uh, he's quite a genius. Hmm, he's kind of scaring me with all these, uh, this shit. Thank you. Thank you. Here we go. I have a feeling this guy's hand consists of all direct damage abilities, which is pretty fucking scary. <laughs> hey, EDU, thank you for the follow and welcome to the shack, buddy. So, unfortunately, we need to draw some of our. We need more burgles, we need more swashing, we need to. Uh, or wind. We need to win <laughs> very quickly. How much damage are we pushing? We're pushing 10, 13, 16, 17, 19 damage. We need more. We need two more damage. <laughs> no tomb will be left unpillaged here at the shack. We pillage it all. Hero power. Looking for that toont. He doesn't get the toont. If he pushes face with this weapon, I mean, what else would he push, right? So I guess it makes sense if he goes face. We just need two damage, man, and we win this game. So we draw SI. All right. He lava bursted the 5-4. Feels so good. Feels so good. You're a goose. You're a goose. You're a goose. All right. So we need to definitely deal with this board. You want to buy a... Uh, so let's take as, l as least damage as possible. Alright, we should be able to win next turn. We've killed everything with attack and spell power. So he would need in his hand 11. So he would need a lo another Lava Burst, a Jade Lightning, and to roll spell power. Or he needs Leroy Jenkins. And... He got spell power, but he didn't get taunt, which is the important part. So how much damage are we again pushing? We're pushing 13, four, f no, 13, uh, how you'll say my 15, uh, 17, uh, 18, uh, 19. Again, we are pushing one, we are one damage off. No, we got it. We got it. We got it. We're going to recalculate this lethal calibration real quick. Just to guarantee we have lethal. So we have 10, 15. 17, 18, 19. Oh, baby, a triple. <laughs> Picking up our second win. Getting some aggro shaman. Feels good, man. He's even running Leroy. The cancer runs deep with that fella. But I mean, if I guess once you go, once you go into the, once you start swimming with the cancer, you know, you're breeding with it. You're creating like other side sub sector cancer decks. You just put Leroy in everything. You just you Leroy this shit up. Even if even if you don't have chicken. Another shaman. All right. If we can if we can close out this deck guy with defeating a double shaman back to back. You got me with the good, good folks. We're just gonna mulligan one card in the hopes that we don't, we uh, we don't get patches. Normally, I'd maybe hold back Shadow Strike, but I kind of like it against the four drop seven seven. So feels pretty good. Feels pretty good. Twitch chat. I will start answering your all of your comments and questions after we finish up this deck guide with the sweet defeat of the Shaman Scum. It depends what kind of shaman deck he's playing, right? So if he's playing some control craziness going on here, like left ballpark field stuff, 
it's totally okay. I'll lose to him. But if he's playing that aggro, he's going to get the beatdown. He's going to get the beatdown. He's greeting me. That's the a start to something dry. nice. Doesn't have turn one goodness. I will swash you. I will pick up a lightning bolt from your class because it's just, you know... As we know, Shaman's just one of the weaker classes in the game. Generating Shaman cards is always a disadvantage to yourself. Hmm, interesting. I think we can just Undercity here. It feels okay. And then we coin Pillager. <laughs> Jam Jams will be ruffled. Uh-oh. We can see Shaman. We can see how good Shaman is. Oh god. Thunder Bluff. Thank you. So we're gonna coin out the Pillager. It's just our strongest play. Blood Mage Hero Power doesn't make sense. Lightning Bolt doesn't make sense. Burgle doesn't make sense. Thunder Bluff is I mean it's a turn five play, so we actually could coin into Thunder Bluff. But unfortunately the Shaman class does not I haven't been able to take the ability of the, the totems yet. But we could. If we get a totem uh, generator, dude, we can do some big things. Well, fudge me, Captain. This guy's uh, hes holding my assault back. Hmm. I kind of want to clear off these little ones. So we could coin SI, kill hero power, kill that one. <laughs> this guy's toast. I don't like Shaman having any board state. We have, like, stuff to get rid of big stuff. So it's not really... We're not too scared. If he wants to Jade Lightning a 3-3, three, three, I guess I'm... Ex that's okay. Nazoth is big, but unfortunately not right now. He's not. It's like, by turn 10, we've we've either secured ourselves a win or we've already lost, right? So it's like, this, this the Nazoth isn't here in here against the Shaman matchup. Unless he's playing Control Shaman, which he's not. Our turn 5 play isn't too bad. A 3-6 is always a solid card, in my opinion. Or we could Blood Mage Burgle, but yeah, just seems pretty weak. He's going to Lightning Bolt, huh? He's going to use a Bolt of Lightning. Well, you know, now now the Buccaneer doesn't feel that bad, but I still think I'm going to go ahead and just throw down the 3-6. So Jade Lightning does uh, 5, and then, of course, the weapon will kill it. He plays four drop. Ooh, Deccan. Will we see a flame tongue? Oh, the Jade Lightning four five. Okay, so Phantom Knives is looking pretty super sick nasty here. So Phantom Knives with Blood Mage would absolutely guarantee us the win. We have two Phantom Knives in our deck though. So ooh, Papi, how you doing? Feel the mojo. Be one with the mojo. I am the mojo. It's amazing when we put a card in our deck, we put two copies, and we draw it. It feels fucking awesome. Woo! Hot diggity duck. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? It feels so damn good. Lightning Bolt does four damage. Ugh. Oh. Another Phantom Knives. That feels good. So this is going to do two. So it kills this. This goes down to one. This goes down to two. But I don't think it's necessary. I think the better clear is to just like... Foo, boo, boo, boo. I mean, we could Shadow Strike and Lightning Bolt. Then if he plays four drop seven seven, it's kind of rough, right? I wonder. So I think we could just go ahead and... Um, let's just Phantom Knives first. Okay, that was out of order. <laughs> you were a little out of order there. So I suppose we're just going to lightning bolt this guy down. We can play our small time buck. Do we want to keep Blood Mage alive or do we want to sacrifice the Blood Mage? I, I like keeping the Blood Mage around. Blood Mage is doing Blood Magey things. Thank you for that dank follow. Matifafa. <laughs> Three cards. We've got Burgle, so technically we have five cards. we got Shadow Strike. we got Backstab. I'm liking this, boys. I'm liking the position we're in. 
Draw another card. Not a problem here at the shack. Draw me them dank cards. Ooh. Tea time? Nah, I can't be tea time yet. Restore a minion to full health. I don't need to do that yet. Maybe we do need to tea time. I want to burgle first. Mm. Fortunately, that wasn't the uh, the craziest of turns we could have gotten. But we do, however, the ability to summon a lot of Murlocs, which could be potentially very powerful. We're slowly but surely we're slowly but surely generating more shaman cards in our hand than rogue cards. Hmm. Five. Oh, it's a very interesting card you have here. It lines up very, very well with another card I have in my hand. Hmm. Very interesting. You know what else? I think it is tea time, boys. Eh, I like the Murlocs, right? Let's a field full of Murlocs. I mean, what more could you really ask for? Let's go for the field full of Murlocs. I see a field Murlocs. Blue, orange, and black. Do we want to give them full health and taunts? And I say to myself, what a wonderful world. So next turn is uh, Nazoth, and we might see the Kansamida fall down. We could even we could even Nazoth and then give him taunt. How rude! How rude! Blood Mage. Is he gonna maelstrom me, bro? I'm ready for it. Oh, the lightning storm, the power! No. You know it's really good that we played that now because now he can't. When we play the Nazoth, what is he gonna? He doesn't have the ability to clear this. I want to protect my face. I'm going to do that right there. Here we that feels go. fantastic. So the only problem is if he draws another lightning storm. That's potentially disastrous. But we have tea time as a backup. When in doubt, tea time. <laughs> we are thirsty for the tea. <laughs> hmm. You can think deep, Shaman. The victory is not yours. The victory is mine. I will accept your defeat. And I will leave you with your pride if you could saw me die. But if you choose to remain in this match, Shaman, what I have obtained a set of skills over the lifetime of my Hearthstone career to find and destroy people like you. I will rip those beads one by one off your necklace. And I will shove them in your ears, so you can't hear your own screams. <laughs> okay, back to the deck guide. Did he just give up? I think that's a, I think that's a, I think he's given up. I can understand your frustration. Do we have lethals? What is this? This is 10, 12, 13. We have lethal with his own shaman guard. How does it feel? Oh my god, what did I just lose to? I'm playing the best deck in the game and I lost to this random ultimate value fucking rogue playing the Zoth and fucking tea time and all this garbage. Uh, Tempo's dorm, that's not on their meta snapshot. What do I do? What do I do? <laughs> <laughs> All right, thank you guys for watching another deck guide. Hopefully you've enjoyed this very fun and interactive deck. Um, the ultimate value rogue. Um, in my opinion, super fun. Maybe not the most powerful deck to play, but of course very fun as we could see uh, by the previous four games we've played. So, as always, I'll catch you in the next video, deck guide video, whatever you plan on watching next. As always, I'm more shack and happy whatever the hell day it is.